Many thanks again for joining me on the program TMI Thursday. Of course, the political space is getting heated more than what we've ever seen before. That's because we just have a few months <coughs> to the 2019 election. The primaries are come, they've come and they've gone. We're looking at the fallouts of those primaries and how they will shape 2019 election. Uh, it doesn't look so good for the ruling party, particularly with recent development in Quara State and then in River State and a few other states. Already, there is a war of words between the chairman of the ruling party and the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Yakubo. Of course, that's uh, as a result of the recent development with Zamfara State. We'll talk about all of that in the course of the program today. But let's meet our panelists. Because now, over the years, we've always heard youths are leaders of tomorrow. And the youths, at some point, started asking the question, if you say we're leaders of tomorrow, if we don't start the leadership, training, grooming, development today, we can't be successful leaders tomorrow. And that's against the background that several of our heroes passed, the Awos, the Zeeks, name them. They had the opportunity of taking over leadership at the prime of their lives. But some have said um, some of the leaders today, even in spite of their age, don't want to leave the stage. They want to continue to determine the trends and how the country should go even for generations unborn. But today on the show, we have a crop of youth, young men, who have decided to take their destiny in their hands to make an impact and change the narratives about our country. Very active in politics. When you listen to them, you appreciate their <coughs> independent mindedness and, of course, the level of intelligence, education, and political sagacity. I'd like to welcome very specially Engineer Ifalu Isibo. He's a member of the PDP. Many thanks for joining us. I also have with us in the studio a former senior special assistant to the, uh, the state government on youth and community mobilization, Comrade Collins Amadi Osara. Who could just say Comrade Collins Amadi Osara is a member of the RAPC, but uh, that's not a registered political party. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. We also have joining us. Uh, it's been an active member of the civil society movement in Edo State, and he has distinguished himself by being elected as a councillor in the legislative arm of Oredo local government. I'd like to thank very specially Comrade Harrison Izeko. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. I also have with us another member of the civil society in Edo State. Is a constitutional lawyer, a human rights lawyer. I'd like to thank very specially Barrister St. Michael Segwagi. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Okay, let me start with Obedi uh, Falu <coughs> Sibo. Uh, it looks like from the analysis that I've been everywhere, the presidential primaries has come and gone. Is this a straight fight between the PDP and the APC? Well, thank you again. I think it's a fight between the APC and Nigerians. Hmm. First of all, I want to empathize with members of the APC. You know, they've been going through a whole lot these past few weeks. And then um, I can imagine, you know, the trauma a lot of them are going through. Uh, how do you know you're going through no, 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 a no, trauma? No, I mean, the there, there's no medical report to that effect. No, no, yeah. No, when you, when you see a man going through four times, you can <laughs> understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, these are the facts. You know, just yesterday we saw on TV how they are grappling with Zampara, HKM, Choir State, Adam Oil State. There's, there's tumult everywhere and, uh, you know, the, the party chairman is trying to find his feet. And really, really, like I told my friends, let us take out today to share a drink with an APC member to comfort him because he is really going through a lot. And like I said, the election is between the Nigerian people and the APC. The, the Nigerian people showed extreme excitement when the PDP selected a candidate in the person of Elijah Chika Bubaka. We saw the excitement. It was palpable in the hearts of people. People were excited. Yes, there is now an option, you know, that the, 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 the narrative of, oh, who are we going to replace him with no longer exists. 
now they have a man who they have confidence in who's going to provide jobs for the people so it's a, it's a nigerian thing not a pdp thing any longer it's nigeria versus the apc and i can tell you that when the people come out against a political party they will defeat the political party okay. and secondly mm -hmm. what what has the apc got you know to tell the nigerian people it's been from bad to worse we've seen a loss of 11 million yeah, but that's that's subjective no no no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm giving yeah. you the figures now no they're subjective the, yeah. the reason why i said that is premised on the facts we've lost 11 million jobs in the last three and a half years we have 87 million poor nigerians today the highest in the world you know we're, we're having a, a total decay in our education system look at the last result from why i come from jam you know nigerian students now cannot even pass mass in english before now we had 50 percent 40 percent but today 28.2 percent that is that is a big mess we're having a state where only five people register for work in the whole state you know so we are seeing a total decay in the nigerian system sector by sector look at agriculture nigerians have not been as hungry as they are today than they've ever been even after the civil war so what are we talking about okay it's let me let me let me pursue the engineer if i lose you but i'm sure we'll come back to you on some of the points that you raised there come collins Amadine. yes um, the Constitution provides for uh, political parties to conduct primaries as the only way candidates can emerge. Uh, some of the challenges that are at the front burner now, uh, whether we like it or not, is on both sides of the divide. I mean, in the APC, in the PDP, these issues are there. Were they anticipated? Are they always part of our democratic process that was seeing all of these issues emerging right now after the primaries as fallouts. Uh, thank you very much, Duke. Um, just as my friend, engineer, has said, I sympathize with my fellow APC progressive members who indeed expected much better results than this. Uh, but though after what played out to an extent in a uh, local government election, we're not expecting anything better, but maybe we're thinking there will be a kind of progressive in the way our people and our leaders do think. Uh, but just quite unfortunate. I am shocked that they did not uh, 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 display the use of consensus candidates that is being stipulated in the Constitution. Because one, well, maybe if they have done that, these issues that have engulfed my party, the APC, uh, would have been lesser. Otherwise, now the national chairman, when he came in, he wanted to set a standard. Indeed, many of us appreciated it, even me, when he tries to bring in direct primary principle in getting the most popular candidates to run for an election. I was very excited. I said, wow, but to my greatest shock, some governors of the party who are retrogressors and claim to be democratic moved against it. In moving against what the National Working Committee tries to, because when you give them power, allow <coughs> them to display the best of them. So even when they fail, you won't blame them. Today, even when they are disarraying in the party, little can you blame the National Working Committee led by Comrade Adams and Liu. Why did I say so? He brought a template to the people of the party. If we go with this, we'll have less problems. Then some persons decide to come together as a team using the, the people in government or the power of government to oppress such a decision and wanting to do it the way they want it. And that is why it has turned back against the party. So who to blame? I heard the first lady tweeted, blaming the national chairman, as it were, for impunity reigning. Impunity cannot reign in APC led by Adam Sushomole if impunity is not reigning in her husband's government. Because it is what players from the government that indeed extend to every sector of the system. But the government has said time and time again that particularly Mr. President that it doesn't want to meddle in, uh, in, in politics, giving leverage to the party now, to, to get into uh, political uh, activities and stuff like that. Very good, sir. So the president said when they wanted to make leadership of the Senate and said he can work with anybody, isn't it? Then along the line, things fell apart. They became a problem. He needed people to assist rescue. That now the problem is that the legislature are not allowing him to move the country forward. When you say you can work with everybody, that is not an issue. According to the party play in Nigeria, a president or a governor becomes leader of the party 
either at state or at federal level. Your body language and your sign must incur and display discipline. Then every member will be disciplined. What comes around, turns around. And that's exactly what has happened. The president has refused to show leadership in all aspects. And that has gone to affect my party. As it were, Adam Saliu Oshomole is just a victim of some cabal that the same wife has said before have attacked her husband's government. The same cabal came and want to oppress Adam Saliu Oshomole. And they have succeeded in oppressing him to 45%. And you trust the man, he's still trying to muzzle out. But just to say, it is a problem that has bedeviled the party. And it's to me, the person who has castrated and gave opportunity for this problem to have gone to this level of impunity in a party which is also extensional in the role of the government is Mr. President, who is the number one leader of our party. And he should be able to set up standard that everything, every other person should follow. Okay. Now you have in Rivers, you have in Imo, you have in Zamfara, you have in uh, Kuara. You have in Bauchi, Adamawa. You have in Adamawa. Even uh, though they have to cancel and cancel and cancel, at the end of the day, we did not get to anywhere. <laughs> and now, you will tell me that it is the national chairman that is this problem? Certainly, no. Okay, let me if they it. have some, some of his own forces, but that does not mean that he's the problem. Okay, let me, let me pursue there. Let me pursue there. The president let me, let me, let me, the let me pursue there because. Uh, the views conversed are entirely yours, and they are also so of course, they are and they are also subjective. But let me let me come to um, uh, Harrison. There is a feeling that what is playing out now in the ruling party, your party, is the result of someone trying to enforce party supremacy in his own way without carrying every other person along. Some have even said. Uh, in his days as an executive of a state, uh, he wouldn't tolerate that. So why are you not trying to superimpose this on other people in the guise of trying to enforce party discipline? I mean, when uh, we heard attempts to sack some ministers, statements were made in that direction, even though as a party chairman, you didn't appoint those ministers. So I, I want to get your thoughts along those lines. Would you say, these challenges is, is, is a fallout of efforts to enforce party supremacy, party discipline in, the, in your party. Well, uh, let me first of all say that uh, the way I'm now we are raising some of these issues, I think there is no problem. These are issues that, uh, that have been resolved to some extent. And uh, like I said, my brother should not cry more than the bereaved. You are not a member of APC, so allow us to um, resolve our issues. Who is not a member of APC now? I'm an uh, engineer. Okay, so all right. Than the, okay. the party is strong, okay. and we have direction. Okay. Yes, uh, you understand that it is everywhere. Uh, so where there's an anarchy of power, there must be a class struggle. Aristotle said, man is a political animal, zoom political. Nigerians are people who believe so much in power. The areas where you have some of these issues, are governments that don't talk them to them. Because they want to put in somebody, they are boy there. So they can see also level of control when they are out of government, you are having some issues. The only way we actually have issues is Zafara State, which as I speak with you, machinery is a place to resolve the issue there. Uh, yes, probably was conducted. There are some money bond group of persons who are still complaining. You know, when you kiss snake, it will not just die once. No body, Nigerians will never accept defeat. <laughs> it will still be shaking. And that's some of this you are seeing. And the party have the mechanism, have the strength to put this thing in place. Yesterday, the government sort of met to the president. And Russia so Russia addressed the press. I didn't know if colleagues watched that. I did. The issue there has been resolved. There is no issue in the most state. The River State issue came up from the court yesterday. Before that, one of the, the least expected Kenyan aspirant went to court that the processes should be notified and all that. The court has just given the attempted. Names have been submitted to ANEC. ANEC never told you that these were not submitted from River State. They only make reference to Zafara State that they could not meet up to the, to the dead men. Which the National Chairman said is not true. Names were submitted before 12 midnight on that particular day. Now, you should expect things like this. The National Chairman came aboard. He said, let us do direct primaries. 
and to the best of our knowledge and ability, that is the best. So that the party members will be carried among, everybody will do their voting. Yes, the governors who have done two ten said no. They don't want it that way. And the national government will work up, we also agreed that in your own state, you can decide whichever you want to go. Okay. You understand? And these people actually went there. They did the needful. That some people are complaining as members of the party does not mean that we, 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 we as a people, we should just allow them. Even, even if you do primary today, and everybody here, we voted, we know that this person is at war. So persons will still want to raise their ugly head that things are not done this way. That is not so that the party should just sit there and begin to watch. Mr. President has given free hand to the party to get their candidates. Before today, everywhere you go, a city president wants to decide what happened in each of the states. But why is it because he's a man of integrity? He has said, do your primaries, submit the name to INEC, and let the election go. So if anybody is saying that the president is ending a betting, for me, you just want that you just, the person just wants to bring a bad name to the president. He has given a free hand, and the measurement chairman in his own capacity do not also have the right to decide what happened in this or this in the most of the state. If the people are saying this is the person they want, and he felt that they were complaining. And if he says that the complaint will affect the party, he cannot act as a national chairman. He does not have the power to not say he will not be the one to decide who becomes the governor of Zafara or who becomes the governor of Soso State. No! And that is not the point of the national chairman. He is just trying to make sure at the end of the day, the party will not have and there are too many issues. Okay. And I was like, it's a surprise to me. Okay. Because I know that when you do things like this, especially those governors who have done two, two terms, mm. there must be issue Because they want their will to prevail on the people. We have seen it in the most state before now. When they did it, when the convention was going on, the, the state government was run out. He had to run to Abuja and begin to complain what kind for head. <laughs> that tells you that the person he was supporting, the people did not need the person. Yeah. And that shows all about the people. Yeah. Not the because it's, it's, it's the governor. Okay. So the person later was declared. The person later was declared. The, the, as, the, as the, a winner. The as national winner. chairman of the party yes. had to prevail. The person had to call those who were against them. And at the end of the no, day, no, 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 they all agree. Since the president has intervened, mm. let a line to go, okay. which is also in line with our party constitution. There was a consensus. He went to Abuja to meet with the president, and a delegate was sent to the state, and they all agree. As I speak with you, those persons who were in there, none of them got to come. None of them is saying they will not, they will, they will not work with, with okay. the person that they found. Right, let, let, let so let's there. get information. Let, right. me just let, let, let me just... Let, let, let me pursue there, 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 uh, Harrison, there. because it's on record that the... Uh, Deputy Governor boycotted that primaries in Imo sure. State, and then one of that person too was also a frontliner. Also, uh, but that that would the state was open. That he decided not to go. Go, yeah. He decided but there were reasons. It's as 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 uh, lack of party loyalty and discipline on the part of those who are carrying them out? Uh, well, uh, before I uh, speak directly to the question, I'd like to uh, appreciate the presence of my friends here and colleagues. It's been a long time since, since I you know, met uh, some of them here, especially engineer uh, Ifalui. Uh, I want to say here that um, the reason why history keeps repeating itself is because people do not learn from history. Uh, one of the fundamental reasons why PDP was defeated in 2015 and almost led to the demise of PDP is the obvious absence of uh, 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 internal democracy and that's exactly what I, I see playing out here uh, at the moment um, the manner in which uh, the primaries have been conducted you know in the ruling party you know leave much uh, to be desired uh, that is why you see a, a lot of uh, wranglings squabbles you know core uh, here and there in, the, in, in different uh, states. 
in Zamfara, uh, there is a problem. In River State, you know, the court had to intervene. In Adamawa State, you know, there are issues that uh, uh, Bindu may have uh, allegiance uh, with uh, uh, the PDP candidate and as such, uh, they are trying to swallow him. Um, in uh, uh, Bauchi State, you know, the same, uh, you know, palpable, you know, uh, quarrel issues are playing out. Um, uh, Nimit, is, is it Delta State? Is it uh, in Imo State? Uh, there's, uh, is it in Kwara? There's no single state at the moment uh, where there are no issue. Uh, to the extent that I, I begin to sympathize with my brother, Adam Sushomole, I don't know where he's going to muster the strength you know, to douse you know, these issues you know, that are here and there. Uh, where I like to disagree with uh, my brother, uh, Harrisi, uh, I know that uh, he's a party man. He likes to be loyal to his uh, party, but I sympathize with him. Don't you know, because, with uh, <laughs> because of uh, the, you know, the, the very you know, pitiable situation he finds himself uh, at the moment. Uh, you see, he cannot say that uh, uh, Mr. President is not to be blamed you know, for whatever, if, whatever is playing out in the party at the moment. Uh, it was uh, Olaro Timi that said in Novura Menobai C that uh, all fishes eat flesh, but it is the shark that carries the blame. Uh, the president is the commander in chief of uh, the armed forces. Is the president of this country. Uh, is the number one uh, party leader of his party. Uh, when things are going well, he, he takes the credit. And uh, where things, you know, are falling apart in the manner in which it is taking place now, you know, he takes the blame. The blame has to be, you know, squarely situated on his shoulders. Uh, uh, personally. Uh, I am disappointed, you know, with what is, uh, you know, playing out because uh, as the ruling party, I expected to, to, I expected the APC to lead, you know, by example. They have not done that, you know. Most of, you know, the primaries that are taking place, you know, have been, you know, shrouded, you know, with misery, you know, de de detected, you know, by clandestine uh, uh, shenanigans and machinations you know, short subjects, you know, to the whips and caprices of yeah, uh, certain well, yeah. individual, you know, who want their interest, you know, uh, to reign supreme, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, Mr. Sonny Duke, I am not, you know, uh, a prophet of doom. And I, I am not a mature in Nostradamus. But I like to say that, you know, when things are not done, you know, properly, mm you know, subject, you know, to the confines of the law. Yeah. You know, the consequences are usually disastrous. I'd like to end it there. Okay, thank you. Um, if I let, me, let me come to you. Um, in, in all of these, the signpost to the fallouts now is the war words between the ruling party chairman and, of course, the INEC chairman. INEC has said, um, you can't field a candidate in Zamfara State because you didn't meet the deadline. The National Party Chairman is saying, why are you jumping into conclusion? And the National Chairman, I mean, the National, the Chairman of INEC is saying, why, I mean, the National Chairman of the party is asking INEC Chairman, why are you jumping into conclusion? INEC went on to say, look, we have correspondences. I mean, you sent us the first letter, this one you're going to conduct your primary. And then you send another, another one to say, this is the next time you're coming. We mobilize our people. And from the report we got from our officials there, no primary took place. And for that reason, you can't field a candidate. Governorship, uh, Senate, House of Representatives, and the House of Assembly. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, on, on this word of words between these two leaders, so to speak? Well, the, the INEC guidelines are clear. Every political party can either have uh, a primary election to select candidates or have a consensus agreement to select candidates. And uh, amazingly, in Zamfara State, the APC did neither. And so October 7th was a deadline for, some, for holding of primaries, and it is clear to the INEC, to the APC, and also, of course, to the opposition that there were no primaries in Zamfara State. So the, the uh, party chairman of the APC has no choice but to follow what, what uh, INEC has said. In fact, Yesterday, we were congratulating the governorship uh, candidate of the PDP because 
he is governor already. And the same goes to, to the House of Assembly, to the Senate. I mean, there's, there's not going to be any contest. And so PDP already has um, a state down. So that's um, a big loss to the APC. And uh, I want to thank Adam Sashomale. We celebrate him because we see that he is doing the best he can to destroy the APC. And that is to our benefit. Because no, that, that's, that's, his, that's, that, uh, no, that's no, the no, no, view. Hold on. I agree with your view, but yes. you have to present your views in a most civil, and, and constructive manner. You can't say he's, you're congratulating he's for destroying the party. Yes, 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 yes. You can't say okay, he's okay, destroying okay, the party let me, let me this because way. he's doing his let best. Let me put it this way. He took conflicting he, statements at the same time. To, he's trying to restructure the party in a very beautiful way that will ensure that the PDP wins the elections. That's how I see it. And in, in any case, if you're going to disagree with the words I've used, they just highlight how the, the plethora of states where there's trouble. Are we going to expound the party chairman from all these wars? Are we going to blame solely the president who has said the, the party structure work? I mean, let's fix culpability where it is. The party chairman has assumed too much power to himself, and that is why the governors are at variance with him. That is the clear case. And compared to what is going on in the PDP, for the first time in our history, we had a primaries conducted. In fact, people were suggesting that the governor of Delta State organized a training session for ANEC directors so that he can teach them how to conduct elections in a free and fair manner. The whole world watched it. We even heard that the president was impressed with the way the PDP had the primaries. And if care is not taken, he may support the, the person who has uh, <laughs> a nurse. That's, that's going too far. No, 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 but it's no, 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 That's, go, that's answer, going too far. And besides, to we far. don't even have any evidence to back that up. We don't have any evidence to back that up. Yes, the party actually congratulated the PDP for the primaries, and Nigerians generally did. And I could tell you, with all sense of loyalty to the Nigerian people, that Nigerians were impressed. Um, they were not even saying Atiku Abubakar as a candidate of the PDP. Many people are saying that let us welcome the, 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 the incoming president. Mm. That is, that is. No, no, you, you can't say that here because no, no, that's that what, election that's has what, not taken that's, place. That's what yeah, say. yeah, yeah. You, the we, we don't have, we don't have the those facts. We don't say if I, I, in conclusion of this round, I want to again empathize with the APC. It is not easy what's happening for us to have a ruling party seeing imminent defeat in just four years. It's a big deal to them. So let nobody try to make us feel that all is going well. All is not going well. Even in, the, even in Edo State, we can see that there is a clear core division in the APC, where the governor has his team, the, the party chairman has his team, and there are also internal powers trying to struggle. So it is, uh, it is victory for the PDP. It is victory for well, the let's, PDP. Let's, let's, wait, let's wait till uh, the end of the election, and then uh, no, we'll no, see what no, happens. No, 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 rules in-house, yes. we wait. The election has not taken me. So I'll post you there. Um, comrade uh, uh, Collins Hamadi Osaga, what is the way out of this seeming you know, potpourri of challenges uh, in the wake of the party primary selection? It's just a few, few months and away. The way out, uh, for me, first, I think it should be Nigeria first, before PDP, no APC, no ADC. No SDP. Even no SDP. ADP. Yeah. Uh, yes. Those presently in power must go to their closets think about the future of this country the innocent persons who have been so much stabbed by every means they need to benefit of including roads including security including water including education that are still gently doing their own in peace to allow this their stone not to hit them at their closest. Because all these things that are boiling, all these signs that are coming, is only portraying that there is danger ahead. May God not let danger visit Nigeria. Amen. They must think beyond their own thinking. They must think beyond their foot because they are, most of them do not know reason with their head. They have decided to use their foot to reason. Because if you can muzzle people the way they are muzzling the system, because it is the beauty of an eternal political strength or system that indeed beautify the entire country as it were, all over the world. If 
Today, for example, in Benin, a camera mobile, upper mission, upper Sakomba, from 6 30 p.m. People cannot walk on the streets of Benin. Little boys are harassing everybody with guns, inviting people homes with impunity. Yet, there are institutions, there are people who ought to give this basic need of the people. But we are more even now concerned with the election. Thieves are entering churches during worship, stealing offering, collecting people's phone. Impunity is reigning the highest order. We are more focusing on election. If government begins to do the right thing for the people, let you should even bother yourself about who you feed. You don't even need to force people to muzzle primary. Whoever you just bring in, you'll be sure the people will kill behind you. Police do not have vehicles. The SSS cannot produce three vehicles. If I die to leave you and go there. But here there are security forces that came metaphors from the needs of the people. Both at federal and state. And local government used to have before. I don't know if they still have today. And nobody is talking. Because the more the people push on illegality through primaries, the heat will be after the election. Because what people want to do now is using coercion. Then when the time comes, you bring out evil gadgets to make to help you ring election. And after they have ring election, considering the level of poverty the people have been embedded into, they will still go and meet them with this cut of size and start disturbing their lives again. So I think the Nigerian people, the way out is clear. The Nigerian people must come out now and think across party line. And say illegality in one place is illegality everywhere. Until you give us candidates who can indeed think about our welfare, we, we are not with you. We have one. Until you think about people who can represent us without prejudice, we are not with you. We have one. That is the only way. And I think this is the time. If APC brings a president they feel has been good enough, let them queue behind. If they bring a governor that has been good enough, queue behind. If SDP does, queue behind. If PDP does, queue behind. But the people must be allowed to exercise their civic franchise. It is their right. If you cannot give them basic things that are their franchise, this one is also their basic franchise. You must allow them to exercise it. And how we can exercise it, how to do with voting. And the people must make sure their vote counts. Okay. Let me, let me pause you there. Uh, looks like you're just sermonizing on the, on the pulpit. But it's okay. Um, just a reflection <laughs> of uh, the way we, we, we right now. Well, let me, let me come to you. Political clergyman. <laughs> let me come to let me come to uh, Harrison Ezeko. We're, we're looking at what options are there in terms of dousing this um, crisis that is on the ground against the background that the elections are just around the corner. What what options are there? What what is the way out? What how do we deal with this issue? What are your recommendations? Well, like I said before, uh, the the areas that there are issues with the party. Basically, the, the serious one is just the one in the Zafara. Yes, the, the Zafara, Zafara state. Yes, yes. yes. No yes but I, I want to get your, your, your if, thoughts if on that if one, on becomes, Zafara state. And if, like you say, you can't feed the candidate. If, if that becomes the day, yes. and I'm saying it today, on the, I'm stating here clearly that if that is the end of the day, mm. APC, we still take over that state. We have 91 political parties. The people are not within the party. People are not the camp. If there are issues, if I make no have their way that the candidate will not, the APC will not fit candidate, then you have DPP. You have several parties there. Okay. The people will go to the party and still vote. So there are options. You so other parties. Candidate. So mm. we see our time for to substitute candidate. Mm. There is enough time. After the the, the, the government for the, the to, to present the candidate have ended. The, the law says that you see our number one week. 
to substitute what coming in the case there are issues so if, so if, if that, that if that law is in place why is INEC saying you can't feel the candidate that's that's what i'm telling you that yes that's, that's what i'm telling you that that's the, the INEC getting more the is law it, is, getting is very political. clear is and and getting political. Political. this is what they have said mm. you have a right after that they go and check there is a lawyer the law is clear okay. you still have one week after that date for substitution of candidates okay is there okay so the all up is on us and the party chairman is saying that they at least got to our neck office before 12 midnight. All these are facts that they will justify. Okay. That the people went to the field that they were issued with, they were violent. Does not mean that the names that were sent to you will not be accepted. They will resolve those things that will come out of it. Uh, my brother said they are already celebrating. I think February is just close by. So why not be patient and see if what you are saying now will translate into the celebration you are talking about. <laughs> it's clear. <laughs> Zambara State is a dead ass state of the Kube president. So, when people read politics and tell us our job, job begin to laugh. When I told this man the other day, a few weeks ago, that I think he would be the candidate of the PDP, they will argue with me on this same place. I said, let's bet. There is no magic you are going to do about it. Because we have built the system, we have proved it, we follow it, and we know those who have the structure and those who have the resources to play. Our party will resolve all those collector issues that are within the party. The, it just, it's just that place and River State. River State issue, names have been submitted. Okay. Somebody went to court and said they should notify the election. And I think I'm not acting in that line. Okay. Even if they are going to act, they are going to give room again for you to send another name because name, they actually met the deadline. Okay. So these are issues that will not create too many problems. But by and large, mm. the beauty is that nobody has said is leaving the party. Nobody has said it's the country to any way. Mm. So that is where you understand that these people are the interest of the party. Okay. What is playing on is just individual interest. And most of this state is that God knows who have done to them. The Nigerian mind, the Nigerian way of doing this, people want to remain in power in debt. And it's wrong. People like me does not promote that. Okay. Why would a sitting governor want to bring his own person? He must be my person. If your hands are clean, why not allow the people to choose the person? That you must bring in somebody so that you'll be detained with the person from outside. To do. And mind you, it has never worked. Just go around all the states, the issue of this country. Every city going around, but they will keep it. They will start it, that will end it. Come for some party, the Kube government is secretary. I don't know, no guy today. I didn't talk to him. No! So, it does not mean that for the fact that you brought somebody, the person must continue to be loyal to you. So, so we don't have such issue in Benin for now. Please talk no, no. with fast. Okay, okay. That's 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 stay on course. Stay on so course. what we are saying is that they should leave our party problem for us. Don't cry more than we believe. <laughs> we will resolve our internal issues and we will come out very strong. The other is not a patriotic party. It's 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 not a patriotic party. We will resolve our issues. Yes. There is enough time. This is just October. We have November. We have December. We have January before the general election. Okay, let me I can assure you that yeah. the national chairman had the capacity yes. and the president to put things in place. All right. And we are going to come as strong. Okay. And victory will be for our, our party. Okay. Mr. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Gwagi, um, what is what? How do you factor the uh, level of sensitization and mobilization of the people in distilling all of these issues to take? A decision. Uh, before I react to that uh, question, I'd like to speak briefly on the Zamfara issue. Uh, by law, INEC has the power to determine compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act. And that is what they have just done in respect of Zamfara by giving a notice of estupe to the ruling party that hence they have not complied they have not complied with the relevant provisions of the law they are hereby estopped from feeding candidates in any of the elected offices in zanfara states particularly section 31 of the electoral act, which you know fix a time frame when they which you know uh, primaries you know must be conducted and name names of candidates you know would be sent you know to the commission. 
and it is INEC that have the power to set guidelines that you know fix a time frame for the performance of this act. Section 87 of the Electoral Act provides that before these names are sent, before candidates can be fed for any elections, primaries must take place. And went further to set the, you know, the procedure okay. for these primaries. Primaries can either be direct or indirect. Oh, yeah. Where it is direct, the law says that the party must set a level, must establish a level playing field, either for the various aspirants mm. or the card carrying members of the party who will be given a fettered access you know, to vote an aspirant of their choice. But when you decide to adopt an indirect primary arrangement, the law says, if it is in respect of the presidency, you must conduct what we call a special convention. And this special convention must take place in all the 36 states of the Federation including the FCT. After you have done that, you will now also conduct what we call a national convention in Abuja mm. to either affirm or confirm the candidate that emerged from that process before the name will now be sent to the commission within a stipulated time. Mm. That is what took place in Eagle Square a few days ago, wherein, you know, more than 14 millions were said to have returned Allegra. Mr. President. What took place in Eagle Square is what we call national convention. But whether a special con uh, convention took place across the United States and the FCT is another issue altogether. I wouldn't know. Okay. You know, that fact is contestable. Well, but there are some... Uh, uh, Former, uh, where some presidential aspirants mm -hmm. who have uh, come out to uh, contest that um, uh, that um, affirmation of uh, Mr. President. That is yes. why I said yes. it, it is contestable. Okay, it is contestable. Okay, uh, but let's leave that at that, you know, so that uh, uh, people will not begin to tag us as a party men, you know. However, in respect of the gubernatorial House of Assembly and the National House of Assembly. Mm. The law says that you carry out a special congress. You must conduct a special congress. Okay. For the gubernatorial position, special congress must take place in all the local governments that constitute the states, where delegates will be allowed to vote for aspirant of their choice. Now, the person who secured the highest votes will not be sent, his name will be sent, you know, to INEC. Meanwhile, that special congress must take place in a designated location within a specified time. So in other words, all of these things must take place within the time frame set by INEC. Mr. Sonny Duke, don't also forget that when this process is taking place, you must notify INEC. IMEC will send their official to monitor and supervise the process in order to determine whether the entire process substantially complies with the provision of the law. Now, the commission has said that what you know, took place in Zamfara, in Zamfara did, does not exist from their own perception. The national chairman is saying, no, we conducted an indirect primary by consensus in a designated location. The question is, Was I next day? what took place from the perception of Mr. President or within the knowledge of the chairman? Did they notify INEC? Was INEC official on ground to supervise and monitor the process 
in order to determine whether what took place complies with the provision of the law. As far as I'm concerned, the reply by the national chairman to the notice given by the commission is of no moment. It's inconsequential. In law, it is what we call a nudu pactum. No, if no. you like, you call it you know uh, 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 something that should not be considered at all. It's a brutus for me. None effect whatsoever. It's of no consequence. It's of no moment. It's of no effect, as far as I'm concerned. But he no. said he said a while ago that there is still a window for substitution. Yes, yes. There's, there's actually a window for substitution. Okay. Like he said, it's yes. correct. Yes. But what Anek is saying that you can't even send your name because there was no primary. So if there was no primary, what are you substituting? You cannot put something upon notice Substitution. And, and expect it to... It, it, I, I, it's have a I have the floor. I have the floor. You are floor. not getting it to a lawyer. I, I have the floor. floor. Allow me... Allow me. Uh, 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 how is it? 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 Allow him to establish the point. How is it? How is it? Allow him to establish the point that he's made. Yes, Mr. Gwagi. I think the substitution he's talking about is to substitute name. Yes. For the particular party. For the party. Where the primary has taken place. Where the primary has taken place. Yes. I make a saying primary did not take place at all. Okay. So if primary did not take place. Whose name are you substituting? In law, you cannot put something upon nothing. Okay, well, maybe, 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 the person, the, the party that will not be challenging that election will no longer be APC. That's what it means. Yes, that's, that's what it means. That's what it means. Okay. okay. Don't, that should be your okay. Okay. However, okay. I mean, the party will speak directly to the question you raised. Yes. That does sensitization. The, the people. The people. Uh, education of the people yeah. play a large part in all of the Certainly, yes. Mm. Are you getting that? Because if you observe, Mr. Sonny Duke, where we are today is different from where we are coming from. Because of the level of awareness of the people. In 1999, it is unthinkable for youths like Osara, people like uh, Ifali and myself, or even Harrison, to come here. Well, you did not mention Harrison last. And speak <laughs> freely. <laughs> Harrison is my friend. Okay. 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 It's unthinkable yeah. that you, you come here and speak freely and you go back to the community without the, 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 the consequence of being leashed, arrested, and kept in the gulag. You know, today you see youths like you know people like us, you know, come out and express ourselves with a high level of knowledge. Mm. That is to tell you that you know the the level of sensitization and education you know, permeating, you know, the particular system, mm. using the, the platform of the media is humongous. Okay, let me post you there. If you just join us, it's still TMI Thursday. Uh, we're looking at the fallouts of the primaries in the build-up to the 2019 elections. Our panelists have been uh, Gino Gbedi, Falu Yusibo, Comrade Colin Samadi Yusela, and of course, uh, Harrison Izeko, Ambassador St. Michael's Egualge. On this last lap of our discussion, we look at uh, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, with the emergence of uh, former Vice President Elijah Atiku Abubakar as the presidential candidate. Uh, interestingly, we, we've not heard or seen any reaction from those who lost in the primaries. But it looks like a major thorny issue now is who will be the running mate to Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Uh, there's a picture that has been going around in the so social media. I'm just wondering how, those, how, how people came about that kind of combination. Uh, obviously, the, the opposition party, the PDB, has not reacted to that poster or picture that has been circulated in the social media. So, um, you know, where they follow you, Sibo. What are your thoughts, first, on the fact that we've not heard or seen any contrary view or opinion about the process of that primaries? But we read in the papers that some gave $10,000, and I was like, wow. 
under this economy, I wish I had the opportunity to be a in a delegate to Port Harcourt. Probably would have been back with, uh, would have been back ten thousand dollars richer. Some said five thousand dollars. I mean, a whole lot uh, in in the, in the media, both uh, majorly social media and of course uh, electronic. I mean, print media. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have we have no confidence in such reports. You know, there's there's no truth in it that uh, money is as much as what you mentioned were given. And if monies were given at all, uh, we're yet to see a contravenement of the law in that regard. Now, uh, contrary to what you said, um, all other aspirants of the PDP mm. have all congratulated our uh, incoming president, Atiku Abubakar, and okay. uh, they've expressed pleasure in the way the primaries went. They've expressed uh, confidence okay. in the way it was conducted. They've congratulated him, and they've all promised to work together with him. And that is you know, a sign, you know, to Nigerians that the PDP is ready. They're ready to make progress. They're ready to move Nigeria forward. And we, we, we are really now our plans and programs. The major focus is jobs. Nigerians have lost, like I said, 11 million jobs in the last three and a half years. That's never been this bad. And that's the focus of our government. We want to create jobs for the people. We want to uh, uh, get, provide political hygiene in the system, where you can have people go to hospitals and get medical care. We can have children go to school and get education. You know, now recently we, we got the um, new figures of out-of-school children in Nigeria, 13.2 million, the highest in Africa. It's a shame on our government, and that is, this is from 10 million a few years ago. So that is to say that even the, 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 the palliative measures, so to say, put in by the government to help to encourage children to go to school has not worked. Instead, it is driving more children out of school. And this to say that children are even having worse meals in school than they were having at home. So now we're having 3.2 million extra children on the street. This is what we're driving at. You know, we're focusing on the issues. We're looking at the infrastructure. There's been a total decay of infrastructure. The Abuja Cardinal Expressway, the Benin Abuja Expressway, is still in a mess since the PDP left it in the last three and a half years. We're looking at education. We're looking at the health system. Imagine the Minister for Education on national TV tell medical doctors who have no place for, for the residency that they could go and be tailors and farmers. That's a disgrace. In, a, in an ideal situation, that minister should have been fired. But again, we have a situation where the government has lost leadership. We have a situation where the president, as many people agree. No, no, that, that, that's, that's a subjective statement. No, 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 and he has made the same statement here, too, yeah, yeah. that there has been a failure of leadership. Mm. And I've just given you sector by sector how I can buttress the fact that there has been a failure of leadership. Mm. It's not what anybody can contest about. Look at insecurity. For the first time in our history, we're having people be, being killed in the drills. And what's going on? There's little or nothing being said about it. Shockingly, we had the media aid of the president tell us that we had a choice, either our land or our lives. And Nigerians are wondering, that we, we had, how did we get to this level? Well, nobody cares any longer. Issues that there's killings in, in, in Benue State, the president has never been there and on time to commiserate with the people. That is not what governance is about. Look at, look at the agricultural sector. When last did you see that they were exporting uh, agri produce outside the country? <laughs> they made a show of it some time ago of yams. The yams never got to the US, they were returned spot. What has been the focus of the government? They said it was corruption. Have we been able to fight corruption? They said it was insecurity. Have we been able to fight insecurity? That is what we're coming with. We're coming with a clear-cut platform, an agenda on how to salvage Nigeria, and I can tell you that Nigerians are excited. Okay, let me, let me pursue there. Um, what, what will be your recommendations in the choice of uh, presidential running mate to the PDP candidate? Uh, thank you. For now, I'm not... Uh, assuming you're a, a PDP candidate. No, 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 yes. me. no, no, no I won't ask you that. that. <laughs> I won't ask you that because, you see, we, we must look at issues dispassionately. It shouldn't always be a long because I belong to PDP. I answer no. I, I don't. You know we don't subscribe. Okay. We, we don't subscribe to that yet. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, first, let me start with your very first beautiful question: the PDP primaries. Uh, I want to officially, on behalf of myself, my family, my children, <laughs> and those who are here, uh, congratulate the People's Absolutely. Democratic Party for uh, successfully. <laughs> conducting a democratic <laughs> primary mm. across board, not up to two words in the entire nation that you have them, and it goes to show that they are learning from their past deeds. That it is not just about party as it were now as a name; it's about the persons who runs party. 
is about those who are saddled with responsibility. There were people party we sent to even INEC, we sent official, and party we sent from National Working Committee, for example, to some states. They will just lodge them in a hotel and they will be eating all sorts of eating, and at the end of the day, they will not come out, they will compile their own list and just go and submit anything they want to submit. And to them, they think they are operating policies and they are sharp. You are not sharp, you are hurting your future and that of your children. You are hitting on people's intelligence. You are creating debt even when you are not throwing guns. Because people have gone to borrow money. Some have gone to sell properties just to see if they can have opportunity to change the narrative. And at the end of the day, you say it doesn't matter. And you just wave on. And you have collected your own person and you have gone away. And you think it will be well with you. The spirit of the ancestors will visit them at their closet. No, let's be candid. Now, why I am thanking PDP is that even for those who will lose out rights at the field, would we'll have no choice because with what we gather, the list of those delegates were shown to all the aspirants. Yes. And they all concurred that yes, these are the people that will vote. There was no manipulation. Um, manipulation as it were. And when it got to the time of counting, they did not make the aspirant to become an enemy of Baoji State or an enemy of Sokoto State to say your my vote did not come from there. There was a way they married all the votes, counted it together, poured it together. You don't know the state that voted for you. You don't know the state that didn't vote for you. That was moving on a step ahead. And indeed, you see beautifully what has come up. And also in their choosing of the running mates, I have no doubt, because they know what is at stake, because it is not so easy to fight an incumbent government who have all the apparatus within its disposal. And all you need to do at a time like this is to garner the people and garner all the needed support <coughs> in order to mostly, if he now comes out as already being the flag bearer of the party, to want to overshadow those other major interests, mm. then there will be a problem. Okay. I am sure what he needs to do now is to call all the call aspirants that aspired alongside with him mm. to bring in Nominations, maybe from a certain region, just nominate, 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 without fear or favor. Okay. Then among those nominations they will bring, present it before another major carcass. Okay. Where if it is three persons by state yeah. at that leadership level, yeah. let them endorse who runs with you. Okay. By then, there will not be Godfather. You can see what almost happened in this election. Many of us were almost convinced that Tambua will emerge. Tambua used to, I was my very good friend. I love Tambua to the to my insure to my knee. But what I also got to find out that played, there were some major interests that were carrying Tambua to, who will become a super godfather if Tambua wins. For Kwan Kwan so, there were people who have also carried Kwan Kwan so, if it's Kwan Kwan so, if it's not Kwan Kwan so, and it's another person, there will be a problem. There are some who have already picked themselves as running mate to whoever comes in. And these people garner themselves as delegates and said, okay, they read A, B, C, Z. And they said, this one had been with us early enough. And it seems not to have a very super godfather. I think this one can have freedom to change the narrative when the system finally comes in. So let us go there. And it was there. Okay. Whether we talk the issue of dollar roll or dollar non roll. Mm. In politics, Nigerian politics as it were today has become very expensive. Take it or leave it. Even a doctor, counselor. My brother is here who ran for counselor. He knew what it cost him through his vein. Meeting people. It was not a joke. At a counselor. He is a counselor of the largest one in my local government. What two? The largest. That local government alone. That one alone ought to be a local government. The local government where the former national chairman come from. Mm. Where the upper of Benin office resides, where the government house resides, he's the legislature that is a, is a big man. Uh, and we need to respect him. I have recovered his expenses. <laughs> and he know what it costs him to go <laughs> from the upper diocese to the entire GROA as a part of some uh, or whatever it is. Now, he knows his expenses. So if Atiku paid $5,000, and others paid $3,000, $5,000. It was open secret primary. 
that those people after collecting your money they still have a choice mm. yes okay so they okay. just decided to do what they did yeah. to allow an eternal democracy play to whether play. it was true money he got it or not but the delegate as a sign took the money if it is money and agreed that it should be him and that automatically makes you sure that those number of persons who are anointed him to go mm. we go back to their awards and give him the needed all right uh, harrison just before we take a break for the news um some issues have also come up the issue of integrity the issue of corruption the issue of uh, relationship with the foreign government like the u.s uh, do you see those as major uh, factors uh, that could mar the pdp uh, presidential candidate as it were against the background of where we are coming from where we are right now in the fight against corruption and then the global rating what uh for me i wouldn't want to overlabor myself on that first of all let me commend the tank uh, commend the pdp for a peaceful primaries uh, there's a hand there's a hand over <laughs> it, it was a, it was an exercise of the isb that the person that had the more resources mm. uh, takes the day uh, sometime ago about three weeks ago i've earlier told them here that article will take the day there's nobody that will be able to match article they have resources they are more structured than then they have been there they have been part of government since 1999 so it's not new and uh, that he will take the day but the PDP members that were here on that, they said no, because they know that if he takes it, they cannot win the election. They were saying no, it's going to be this person, including my barrister here, who said, God forbid, it's going to be this person. But here we are, Atiku is the flag bearer. We want to commend him, and we are waiting for the general election. Just to say that, uh, you see, the issue of integrity, the issue of uh, corruption, at the end of the day, the cast will be on top of the table. We are aware that my brother cannot travel to the U.S. As we speak today, this is a man who has been in government since 1999. One, 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 one thing that, that really picks my mind, people keep saying that this man has so much money. Atiku is a multi-billionaire. Where did he get this money from? Where has he work? Where is the company? What does he sell? People just, the Nigerians are just celebrating. My joy is that before today, PDP said Buhari is too old. You need a younger person. And they brought a man of the same age group yeah, to, 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 to Ross to come and manage him. Why is that the devil you know is better than the angel you don't know? If you have been saying that Buhari is too old, he has nothing in his brain, he's an old man, we need a younger person. I will wait to see somebody of 45 or 50 something. I will wait to see Tambora who is a younger brain. Maybe we have something to offer. Now you are bringing me the same old brain who have millions of resources of this country who we are there with 16 billion dollars we are spending power and yet we did not get power today you are not saying the man is not the able to help the man is the man of people to deliver the engineer according to engineer the man can do this he's going to create a job where they have the opportunity and nothing was done what was refinery working in this country when they were yes. there power, 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 power a few years ago? Yes, it was. Look at what you are saying. Let's just listen to you. True. Let's be proactive. The refinery is not working in this country. I have the floor. Yes. That's the question. Yeah, I have to talk about your speech. Yes, I have the You look gentle, but your comments are. Let's stay on course. Let's stay on course. What you are saying is that you have presented a candidate to Nigerians. Let us look at these two persons. One has spent three and a half years. From a system that be so bastardized, from a system that they took over, there was nothing on ground. Destroyed by the same PDP. And the man is trying to build from the scratch. A system that they took over the majority of reception. Nothing was on ground. No resources. A country that I've never never said. Let me come back to you. So that, so, that, so, that so, that so, that you so that you conclude your point. So then we are sports rice. Can, can you just stop right there? The food we eat. Can you stop right there? Me, sure can, can, you, can you stop okay. right there? Can you stop? I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Mr. TMI, we we'll just just take a short break and then we'll be back to call it a wrap on the show. Then go ahead. TMI, every opinion counts. Okay, just at the verge of uh, concluding the show today with our panelists here, so look at the fallout of the primaries just concluded across political parties 
in the country in the build up to the 2019 election. Harrison Zeko, you were on the floor before we went for the. Well, just yeah, to yeah, say just that to uh, as we yeah. end up mm. that uh, the PDP candidate is known by the people. Alaji Bubaka Atiku mm. is a Nigerian. He has been part of the system. Oh, yes. The decay we have suffered through this country, he has been part of it. So uh, for him to match Atiku, our incumbent president, I think uh, we, we, are, is, is as, we are already there. I think he's already there in 2019. He cannot match him at all. No, no you say uh, he's already there in 2019. Uh, That's why he's already there. He okay, no match. Matter. He, can, he, can, okay. He, cannot, okay. he cannot match at all because okay. the, 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 the party failed to bring the younger person, which we have been talking about mm. before now. They said, I'm quoting them now that a 74 years old boy is too old to mm. be a president in this country. Mm. That the brain is no longer working going to weak care of your share. That this boy is not thinking where well. they need a younger brain mm. that will be able to think and do something. So they've yeah, they will Yeah, they another 73. Just yeah. say it's bracket. Yes. I think it, 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 for us to go back there, let's just stay where we are so okay. that uh, <laughs> we can continue. All right. Um, to, uh, last to last word on this, uh, Barrister Gwagi. Uh, uh, personally, I, I, I am not uh, inspired by the candidacy of uh, whether Atiku or Buari, uh, because uh, both of them represent a uh, you know, relic of antiquity. You know, they are both, uh, <laughs> no, no, uh, let's, let's be very civil in our, uh, in our language. Uh, uh, when I say relic of yes, antiquity... Yes, yes, let's, let's be civil. You can't I, call them relics, you can't call them antiquity. These are Nigerians, these are human, are human beings. What yeah. I mean is yes. they are both septuagenarian. Mm -hmm. you know, they, are, they are old. And uh, they represent the same old order we have been trying to, you know. To so, were you disappointed with the PDP in terms of the primaries, the outcome of the primaries? No, the, the, the primary is, is fantastic. Okay. Only that the person who emerged is, you know, is the person I have, you know, quarrel with. Okay. Personally, I do not believe, and I, I, I still find it difficult, you know, to come to terms with reality that what, you know, the political class has to offer us. Mm is a lion and hyena you know to the extent that i find myself in a state of subordinality mm. in a state of helplessness you know perhaps you know we may have to go by what uh, uh, nelson mandela once said that uh, when you find yourself in a position where you have to choose between two evil and you must choose you know, you, you go for the lesser evil. Okay, so I'll pass it there. Uh, let's, I, not, let's not I take it further. Mr. Let's, 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 not, let's, let's, not, let's, not, let's not take it further. Just pass it there. Uh, let me get, in a minute, a final word from you. Well, you raised some uh, concerns about mm. the uh, incoming presidents or the other kind of the APC. The fact is that there are no corruption allegations leveled against him anywhere in the world. He's never been arrested. There are no allegations against him in the EFCC. He's never been investigated. Or oh, he has been investigated, and he was never found culpable. So when people say he's corrupt, I think it's just uh, an impression, an, an opinion that they want to, you know, to impose on him. But for you to confirm that someone is corrupt, the courts must decide. Mm. But there has been no case of corruption leveled against him anywhere in the world. And so someone else talked about going to America. America decides who they want to come into their country. Millions of Nigerians every day are refused of going to America. So what's the big deal about... You know, Nelson Mandela was not allowed to go to America for decades. The, pres the Prime Minister of sure. India was not allowed to go to America for decades. Sure. So there, there, there are world leaders who for many years were denied access to America. So that is not a big, Nigerians do not care who has access to America or not. What they want to know is, do you have the capacity to deliver uh, a project for Nigeria? Yes. <laughs> this man employs 50,000 Nigerian people. So Nigerians feel that, yes, for jobs, give him a pass mark. He has done it before, he can do it again. Okay. In a okay. situation where we have lost 15, 11 million jobs, and so on. Oh, and and so, yes. no, no, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics is not, it's not a PDP organization. Mm. That is the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. You and they came up with the fact that we have lost 11 million jobs in the last year and a half years. That's a fact. Okay. The fact also that it, it is 7 million Nigerians are living in poverty today. That's a fact. The fact that 13.2 million children are out of school today. That's a fact. No, we cannot argue this. And these are the things that the okay. man is saying is going okay. to tackle. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Collins, so a minute. W what's your final thought? Yeah, first, I want to sympathize with my brothers in Orion and Wounde who also went for the primaries till tomorrow. We are trying to pacify them to, to understand uh, that what goes around sometimes can toss around. And even those that went in some part of Obia. But just to say that I think our leaders and our party across party lines should learn and see Nigerian projects 
beyond their personal uh, interest okay. and believe in democracy because democracy is the only way that the people can actually have the opportunity of choosing who leads them. And also to talk briefly on the America saga. I never, Trump has not visited Nigeria since he came. There is no big deal that we must visit America. If, I, if we are doing well, Americans should start visiting us. Mm. So I'm sure it will even be better, for example, to have a president who cannot go to America. I want to build a Nigeria that looks like America. So I, I just think the people should think across board and help the protest Nigeria. Okay, thank you very <laughs> much. Let me see. Thank you very much. No, 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 leave it. Just let, that's it. let him be. Um, I, I want to be thanks to you, you gentlemen, for the thoughts that you expressed on this platform in the last. Um, one hour or so talking about the primaries, talking about Nigeria, talking about the future. I mean, the, the, I started by saying uh, if our youths will realize that this is about them, they'll be more active in politics than we are currently. Certainly. Because, like uh, Barista Gwagi said, uh, the leaders that we have now, some of them to be specific, they've been there for years. And it doesn't look like they have the intention of leaving the stage just yet. But if the youths realize that this is about their future, this is about the now and their future, and then they decide to take their pride of place, you agree with me that we can really make things happen on a positive side. The crime and criminality will reduce, the kidnapping, the armed robbery, and all of that social vices will reduce. It is a fact that these social vices are there and they will continue to increase when we don't provide the enabling environment for these youths to be gainfully engaged employed uh when people started dying in the sahara desert the red sea all manner of um, activities are ongoing to see how we can discourage that but when these guys come back uh, whatever palliative that is created if it's not getting to them as i went due the chances are that the first tranche that gets to them is enough for them to want to go back abroad. So we need to create the environment for people to fulfill their destinies and realize their potentials. Nigeria is blessed. Nigerians are blessed. The youths of this country, they've got what it takes to take Nigeria to the next level. All we need to do, provide the right leadership, provide the right direction, create the enabling environment for people to thrive. That's my take out today on the show. TMI, thank you so much for joining us. And you know, Betty Fanley, thank you for coming. Thank you, Com uh, Collins, thank, thank you. you Harrison, thank you. Thank and you. Bryce O'Gregor, thank you so much I'm for coming. Honored. And big thanks to all our crew members for making the show a huge, huge success. Without them, it would be difficult. And for you watching at home, probably you get late to work today because you need to stay with us and get a, a, be part of this discussion. We well, thank you for staying with us. Have a great week ahead. The Pigeon version of TMR will be on tomorrow, Friday, with uh, the regular crew. Yeah. Until then, stay blessed and have a great weekend. Bye for now.